Welcome back to this series where we build a RESTful API with Node.js. In the last video, we had a look at all the theory and that was important, but now let's dive into the fun stuff and let's start building a RESTful API. So let's have a look at what we'll build and then let's start with it. So what are we going to build in this series? Our API will have a couple of resources I want to build an API that's realistic and that contains some things which are typical to RESTful APIs. For this, we'll have a products resource. So slash products is one route we can target. And there I want to support get requests to get a list of all the products we have, post requests to add new products. I also want to be able to target an individual product by ID and get information about that product, patch that product, so change it, update it, delete this product so that we can get rid of it. And let's also implement a orders resource where we can place orders. So where we, for example, could get a list of all the orders we have. I also want to be able to post a new order, so create a new order. And I also want to be able to then access my individual order and just like for products, get more information about it and not patch it. Let's say we shouldn't be able to edit our orders, but we could delete, so cancel them. That is what I want to build. We'll also add authentication to make sure that some of these routes of these endpoints are protected so that only logged in users can access them. And therefore you will also learn how to log users in when building a RESTful API because we can't use sessions, remember from the last videos? So that won't work. That is what we're going to build. We're going to build it step by step. And we're going to start with it right now. So let's start with building this RESTful API. And for that, I'll navigate or I navigated already in the folder where I want to create this project. Make sure you do the same. And then in the terminal here, I'll just run make dir for make directory to create a new directory and then the name of the project. And you can of course also do this in the Windows Explorer or the finder manually. You don't need to do that in the terminal. I'll name it node rest shop, something like that. Then with CD node rest shop, I can navigate into it. And now we have an empty folder. Now we first of all need to put this under control of NPM, nodes package manager, because I will install a couple of dependencies and I will install them all through NPM, this dependency manager tool. For that you need Node.js and you will need this anyway, since we're going to create a node restful API. So having node makes a lot of sense. You can get Node.js from Node.js.org, either download the latest version, or if you're facing any issues with that, download the long-term stability version 8.9.1 at the point of time I'm recording this. Once you got this, simply type npm init in this new project folder. And this will now walk us through a little wizard here, which allows us to initialize that. So you can assign a package name, version, some description like, a Node.js RESTful API tutorial project, build a simple shop API, something like that. Entry point doesn't really matter for us here. Test command, I'll leave that empty. Can enter a Git repository, I won't do that for now. Can enter some keywords, don't need to, you don't need to. And an offer, here I'll put my name. Finally, you can choose a license, I'll confirm this default license and type yes. With that, we got this new file in there and I will now open this whole project in an editor. Now I will use Visual Studio Code, but you can also use a, another editor, Sublime, WebStorm, Atom, whatever you like. So I opened the project we just created in this editor and there you see this package.json file that was created automatically through this npm init command and here you can always tweak these things you just confirmed in the terminal if you want to. Now I'll open the terminal in this editor, that's the built-in uh, terminal into Visual Studio Code. It's the same as the default terminal on the operating system though. And I now want to install a couple of dependencies we'll need. We need Node.js, but we already got this on our system. 
So what I will install here with npm install dash dash save, dash dash save uh, creates an entry in the package.json file, is express. Because I will use express as a framework for Node.js to make building this API a bit easier. And we'll add more packages throughout this video series, but let's start with this one. With Express installed, I'll add a new file to the project by clicking on this icon here or simply hitting Command N. And I'll name this file server.js. Here, I will set up all the code to spin up my Node.js server, which as you probably know, we do through code, through JavaScript code. So not like in PHP where we have a separate server software, which then kind of is connected to our PHP script and stuff like that. We create the server instead in JavaScript when using Node.js. Now, how do we create that server then? Well, first of all, import something from Node.js and I'll store it in a constant named HTTP, const and let our next gen JavaScript features, which Node.js in the later versions supports. And I do import it with require HTTP. Now, if you worked a lot with single page applications or with front end JavaScript development in general, you might be used to the import something from something syntax. Now, this syntax is not yet supported in Node.js, hence this old or still the only import syntax we have in Node.js. So this HTTP package I'm importing here provides us some functionality we need for spinning up a server. Additionally, I'll create a new constant port where I will assign a port at which my project should run. And here I want to either get that port through an environment variable or I will hard code it in there. Now the environment variable would be process.nth.port and process.nth simply uh, accesses Node.js environment variables and this would be set, for example, on the server you deploy it on. Most hosting providers offer you the, the uh, opportunity or offer you tools to inject environment variables into your running project and then you would simply add this port environment variable. If it's not set, however, we'll use 3000 as a default port. Thereafter, I'll create my server and store it in a constant with this HTTP package and then the create server command. Now to recreate server, we need to pass a listener. So a function which essentially is executed whenever we got a new request and which then in turn is responsible for returning the response. I'll leave this empty for now, but we'll add something soon. With the setup we have here, it wouldn't really work because we need to handle incoming requests. Thereafter, I'll call server listen to really start the server and I'll pass the port as an argument. So it starts listening on this port and then it will execute whichever listener or function we passed to create server, that's the idea. Now this is a very simple server setup. I'll now add a second file app.js and this file now is spinning up this express application which will make handling requests a bit easier for us. So how does this now work? There I will create a new constant named express and I will require express. That's the package we just installed with npm install dash dash save. I then will create a new constant app and just execute express like a function. This will spin up an express application where we can use all kinds of utility methods and so on. Now I will add more and more functionality to this file. For now what I will do is I will simply add app and then call a method on app and then method will just be use. Now use as a method sets up a so-called middleware. So an incoming request has to go through app use and to whatever we pass to it. Now the thing we pass to it can have different formats. It can simply be a function like an arrow function. You can also use a normal one where you get the request, the response, and some special next function. The third argument here is actually a function, which you can execute to move the request to the next middleware in line. And if you don't execute it, the request will not go there. And here, what you could do 
is you could simply use response to send a response. So you can here simply send a response and let's already send a JSON response by first of all setting a status code. It's a method and takes the status code. Let's send 200 for everything okay. And then the JSON method and this will send a JSON response. So with the right headers set up and so on. And there you can pass a JavaScript object will automatically be stringified for you because JSON data, which is sent over the wire, is in string format. And there we could add a message property, whatever you want, and simply say, it works. Now, with that set up, what we have to do at the end of the file is we add module exports and set this equal to app. With that, let's save this file and go back to the server.js file. And there I will now import app with require and then I'll point to slash app, this app file we just set up. You can omit the file extension here, by the way, it will automatically look for JS files. Now I pass app to create server and the express application qualifies as a request handler. So with that, we have a setup that should actually work and allow us to send a request, a get request right now, or any type of request actually, to this backend and this middleware should make sure that we actually receive a response. Let's try it out and in the terminal, in your project folder where you ran npm install, you can now run node to start something with the node library and target server.js and this will execute it with node.js. And keep this process running. It doesn't finish, so it's not stuck. It should keep on running because you just started your server. And now how can we see if it works? Well, for now, since we started this on our machine, it runs on localhost and then at port 3000 because we don't have environment variables here. So it takes 3000. Let's try it out in the browser. There, if you enter localhost 3000, you should see a message, it works. And by the way, you should also see this if you send some different kind of request, like a POST request. Now, we can't easily simulate a POST request through the browser like this, but we can use a useful tool for this. The tool I mean is called Postman. You can simply Google for it and you should find getpostman.com. It's a tool which helps you with developing APIs. It allows you to simulate all kinds of different requests. You can download it for the different operating systems. So I'm going to go with Mac OS here and then simply follow the instructions here, install it, enter the API endpoint and so on. Once you started it, you're prompted to sign in, but you can skip this. And now you can create a new request. So if you click here, you can give this a name and a description. You can all just exit here. And now you're on this screen. On this screen, you can always create new requests by clicking this plus button here. But then you can choose the different HTTP words. Now we won't support all of them in this RESTful API and some of them are really rarely used, but we'll have a look at get, post, patch and so on. So let's try a post request and let's send it to localhost 3000, just like this. Click send and you should also see message, it works. And here you can also choose between the raw format, so the request body as it looked like, a formatted one, and preview here um, also is nice. If you, for example, would get back HTML, it tries to preview it in a nicer way. You can also have a look at the headers which were created by default, like application JSON. That was set up because we used this JSON method here on our backend. And with that, we created our first very basic RESTful API. Now it's not really useful. It doesn't have different endpoints. It's not adhering to all the constraints we set up, but the base functionality here isn't that wrong. Now let's continue on this road and let's have a look how we can improve this and get closer to the API setup we sketched out earlier in this video.